Hello my rays of sunshine. Welcome back to my channel. So right now I have a little bit before baby boy wakes up and I figured I would give you guys my labor and delivery story slash an update on what is going on in my life. I first want to start off on a more serious note um, and just say with everything going on in the world right now um, there's just some things that I don't want to ignore and I can ignore um, just like everybody I feel like for the most part who has a platform and although I do not have a ton of followers on Instagram and I don't have a ton of subscribers I feel like even the small amount of people that I do impact or that hear me um, I feel like it's important to say that obviously the world is hurting um, and there's just no room for racism and the things that have gone on with the George Floyd murder um, and police brutality and everything going on, um, I just want to say that if you have even a second to do some research and do some learning like myself, um, I kind of, not that I didn't pay attention to things like that happening and not that I ignored the fact that there was still racism in our world and that racism was still alive um, but I don't think I actually understood the magnitude of it um, so if you're like me and you kind of feel that way too do some research look into movements like Black Lives Matter and obviously I am not black and I'm not a person of color, but um, my heart aches for the black community and just everything that they are going through and have gone through. I think the George Floyd case where you see with your own eyes something so tragic and unfair happening, um, I think that was a wake-up call for a lot of people and don't feel ashamed if that was your wake-up call like for me I'm here I'm listening now um, yeah so do what you can donate if you can to certain causes um, and just even if you have a second to just spread some love and spread kindness it only takes a minute to do something like that, to send a nice message to somebody. Um, there's just so much going on right now, and it's a crazy world, but this is our chance. Um, especially myself being a Christian, this is, I feel like, my opportunity to spread light and be an encouraging word and um, just being here for people who maybe I don't know in real life. Um, yeah, so I don't know if any of this is making sense. I just know that this situation, that this, everything going on in the world has been weighing heavy on my heart and I don't know if there's anything that I can say or whatever, but if I could just bring like the tiniest ounce of awareness to anybody who maybe doesn't really realize what's going on, um, I'd like to do that. So yeah, with that being said, I'm going to give you guys the rundown on my labor and delivery story. So if you guys want like an in-depth story time, I guess, then just keep watching. Okay, so first things first, I want to start off with, I guess, an update on what is going on in my life. Obviously, I just had a baby. Brandon and I welcomed our little boy, Emmett James, into the world. And he is a little over a month old now, which is so crazy to me that that already 
happened, but that's already been a month since I've had him. I think time is going by so fast, which is nuts. So um, I'm just like getting comfortable, sorry. And I'm trying to hide the PV pad that is in the back. My house is literally, for the most part, in shambles because we are moving. So if you see a disaster behind me, that is why we actually bought a house. Yeah, we bought a house. So you're gonna see some cardboard boxes. You're gonna see a mess in the background. So I apologize for that, but we bought a house. We should be moving in in the next couple of weeks. And yeah, so that's super exciting. Look out for house tour videos and decorating videos. I'm super excited to do that. It's been a long time coming. This is something that Brandon and I have prayed about and prayed over for so, so long and it's finally happening. Our prayers have been answered and we just feel so blessed to have everything just like falling into place right now. It's a good season of life for us. It's a stressful season of life, but um, we're embracing it. So yeah. Okay. So for my labor and delivery story time. Let's start on Thursday the 7th. I woke up early a.m. with cramps. Like they were just period cramps pretty much. Not worse or less than my normal period cramps. Um, and I was kind of timing them because it wasn't like a consistent pain, but they were consistently coming, if that makes sense. So I started timing them and I was noticing like they were about like 10, 15 minutes apart, but they really were not strong and they didn't hurt. So I didn't know at that point if they were Braxton Hicks or if they were actual contractions. So. I kind of just went along, went back to sleep. I could sleep through them at that point, and I woke up, everything was normal. I mean, I was still having these period-like cramps, but I had a doctor's appointment at 9 a.m. on Thursday. So I was like, you know what, I'll just go to the doctor. If something's happening, great. If not, then okay, that's fine too. So, nine o'clock in the morning rolls around on Thursday, and I'm at my doctor's appointment and I am not dilated at all. She actually like previously at a, another doctor's appointment like two weeks before, um, she had said that I was like almost a centimeter dilated but at this one she said that I wasn't. So I don't know if that can happen. Uh, but yeah, that's what she said. So I was really bummed because I'm like, okay, this is not happening today. This is not happening anytime soon. And I don't know why, but I kept feeling like I was going to go over my due date, which was actually May 11th. So I went home and I was like, you know what? I'm going to film one of those videos, the like how to jumpstart labor, doing the old wives tales, tricks and tips to get labor going. So <laughs> that's what I did. I invited my mom and sister over. We took a walk. And at this point, I kind of noticed that my pains were getting a little bit more intense. They still felt like just normal cramps, but just maybe like a little bit more. And I don't know, I kept just like pushing it off like it was Braxton Hicks because my doctor had said I wasn't even a centimeter dilated, she didn't think labor was starting, and she also told me that the pain that I was feeling didn't really sound like actual contraction, so there's that. So anyway, I went for the walk, and when I got back inside, I think it was probably mid-afternoon on Thursday at that point, so it was probably like 5-ish p.m., and I noticed that the pains were getting a little bit closer together after my walk. Anyway, I went on with my life. I continued filming the video that I thought was going to be my inducing labor video, but it ended up just being my birth vlog, so that was really funny. But I cut up a pineapple, I drank the raspberry leaf tea, and I was doing everything to jumpstart labor. Little did I know that I was actually already in labor, so there's that. So, then, at, I don't know, probably like 9, 10 p.m., they got significantly worse, the cramps that I was feeling. I could definitely tell that I was becoming more and more in pain, and I 
kept tracking them on the app that I was using. I think it's just called Contractions. I'm pretty sure like everybody uses that one now. Uh, yeah, so I just watched it closely and then by about, I don't know, like 11 or 12, I was in pain. I was in a lot of pain, but I don't know why my brain just continued to think that it wasn't real. I don't know if it's because my doctor told me what I was feeling was not actual contractions, so I just like kept that in my head. But now looking back, I wish that I knew what was happening only because I let Brandon sleep the entire night through and I didn't wake him up for help. And although that was really great because he was able to sleep and get a good night's rest, I feel like I definitely could have used his support during my labor. So then I think at like 1, 2 a.m. I'm noticing I'm getting zero sleep. I cannot find comfort in any position. I am getting up from laying down like every six or seven minutes and I'm in a lot of pain consistently. And then I think, I don't remember what time exactly. It was probably around that time, like two or 3 a.m. I actually lost my mucus plug and I think that's when I started thinking like, okay, no, maybe this is actually real, but I don't know when or if I should go to the hospital yet. So I ended up taking like eight showers. I was in and out of the shower trying to find like relief and comfort from the pain that I was feeling. I was walking around and trying to like walk through and breathe through the contractions that I was having. And it was just getting really, really intense. Again, all while Brandon is sleeping and I'm trying to like lay down, trying to sleep for like 10 minutes, but it was just not happening. So then around 4 a.m. I decided, you know what? This is getting really, really bad. I'm going to call the hospital or call the on-call doctor and see what they have to say. So I called and the doctor ended up calling me back within like 10 minutes, but she had an emergency C-section to do, so she told me to call the labor and delivery portion of the hospital. Ward, do you say ward? I'm not really sure. So that's what I did, and the nurse that answered ended up saying basically like, it didn't sound like I was too far along, and this was also my first baby, so, it's better to just stay at home versus coming to the hospital because that's like the last place that you want to be is basically what she said to me. So I was like, okay, let me continue to go through all of this pain. My mucus plug had come out at this time. And again, I was in so much pain that I did not even sleep, I think longer than five minutes at a time. So then, sorry, somebody like just pulled up outside of our apartment so I'm like who is that anyway so then <laughs> at about 7 a.m. at this point I am shot I'm exhausted I'm obviously in the most pain that I've been in because it just continued to get more intense and closer together the contractions just became like about five minutes apart at this time so Brandon wakes up for work and I am he, he just sees on my face, like, I'm exhausted, I'm spent, I, I don't even know, I probably look like a hot mess, and he's like, Alyssa, you are in labor, you need to go to the hospital, like, we need to go, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know if this is real, my doctor yesterday said that it wouldn't feel like this, but, like, I really hope it is, because I'm in so much pain, like, I don't know how much more... I can handle like if this isn't labor and what I'm feeling is just like Braxton Hicks I don't know how I'm gonna survive labor this is this was literally my train of thought so I then call the on-call doctor and I tell her I'm like hey listen I haven't slept at all this has been like the most miserable night I'm in so much pain I think I'm gonna come in and get checked and she's like yep if that's what you want to do then come on in and like again no urgency she sounds like so 
I don't know, like nonchalant and like not really concerned or I don't know. So we pack up. This was around, yeah, like 7 a.m. I get everything together. I call my mom. I'm like, listen, I didn't sleep at all last night. We're going to the hospital. So on our way to the hospital, I'm just, I remember telling Brandon, like, I'm going to be so upset if I get there and I have not progressed at all. I feel like at this point, I'm like, I'm probably only like two centimeters dilated. I'm going to be really like disappointed in myself because I don't want to labor in the hospital. I really do want to be home, but again, I'm in so much pain. I don't know how long that I could possibly do this without getting an epidural. So obviously COVID is going on right now and Brandon had to drop me off at the door and I had to walk in by myself and that was really scary and just, I don't know, kind of depressing. But I do know that I am pretty lucky because some women were not even able to have their husbands or partners, whatever, with them during labor during this time. So at least he was able to come in eventually. So I walk upstairs, I get to where I need to be, the front desk, and they are like, okay, well, like, let's get you checked. And then if you do get admitted, then your husband can come up and blah, blah, blah. So... They have me change into a robe and everything like that. I sit down on the bed and the nurse starts checking everything and going over everything. And she checks me and she's like, um, you're at a seven, like seven centimeters to eight centimeters dilated. And I literally looked at her and I was like, you're joking. She's like, no. And then later on, she ended up saying like, how she thought I was only going to be at like a two or three with the way that I was just acting like I wasn't acting like I was in that much pain I guess but I was so they end up admitting me obviously right away because if you don't know you only have to get to 10 well not only but you have to get to 10 centimeters in order to start pushing and I was at a seven ish eight so they admit me Brandon comes up with all of our stuff and they finally get me on an epidural, which I have to say was not as scary as I thought it was going to be. I feel like I hear some horror stories about like the pain, but it didn't hurt. And I don't know if it didn't hurt because of how much pain I was already in or if it just didn't really hurt. It just kind of felt like a normal needle. I do know that they're huge, but I did not look at the size of the needle. I feel like that wouldn't have been very smart of me to do. So I just faced the nurse and you have to hold really, really still. You can't move. And then they do the epidural. So instantly I started feeling so much relief. Like from the waist down, you don't really feel your contractions. You feel pressure still, but the contractions were gone. And I guess, I, yeah, I should mention kind of how my contractions were feeling. There was just a lot of pressure bearing down and it almost kind of felt like the worst like constipation. Sorry, I don't want to say that, but that's exactly what it was. Like the worst pain in that way. Um, but as soon as I got the epidural, that kind of subsided. And then maybe like an hour into me having the epidural I was like trying to update like all my family and friends with what was going on but the epidural started to wear off and I don't really know why but I think the drip thing that I had was not releasing the medicine to me so they had to come in change that and then it was like it restarted so I did deal with like a little bit more pain during that time so that kind of was rough but yeah, so then I think by the time I actually got admitted, it was probably like 9, 10. And by 3, 2.30, 3 o'clock, I was ready to push. So that's how fast I was dilating, which I have to say I'm super blessed. I thought that it was going to be a much longer process, but it went by so quickly and I feel like it was fairly easy, especially being my first birth. So, yeah, and then at 3.41, he was born, and it was great. I mean, obviously, pushing was 
really hard and that was probably the worst pain that I've ever felt in my life but with that being said I also feel like the fear that I had of it did not live up to the actual pain that I was feeling if that makes sense so yeah that is my labor and delivery story it was pretty black and white I feel like it was just very smooth it's something that I prayed about since the minute I found out I was pregnant I feel like that was literally my biggest fear was giving birth and I don't know I could not have done it without Jesus <laughs> I feel like I definitely couldn't have and Brandon was so great throughout labor at the hospital obviously when he was finally awake and the delivery he was just telling me to breathe in through my nose out through my mouth and that was really helpful yeah so I feel so blessed with the experience that I had we had really awesome nurses at the hospital there was just like one nurse that we were kind of like iffy about but that was okay that wasn't even that big of a deal and yeah this is Emmett I wanted you guys to meet him he is just the sweetest little boy. Are you the sweetest? Are you the sweetest? Yeah. He is one month old and we just had his one month old doctor's appointment today and everything is great. He is healthy and he's doing well and he's happy. So I wanted you guys to just meet him really quick. So I'm going to be doing other types of videos like this. I want to obviously update you guys on whether or not I'm breastfeeding, um, how my breastfeeding experience went, and just other types of videos. I also want to do a newborn essential haul video. There's a few things that Brandon and I have purchased right when he was born or like within the first week because we noticed we needed a few things or we wanted a few things so um look out for that video soon i hope you guys enjoyed this little story time and i will talk to you guys next time